Joining me on stage are two Democrats and two Republicans, leaders in our state legislature, together making up four very committed lawmakers. They are, and please join us now, Representative Ken Martinez. Where are you, Representative? Here you come. A Democrat and former Speaker of the New Mexico House. House Minority Leader, Majority Leader, Nate Gentry, a Republican. Senate President Pro Tem, Mary Kay Papin, a Democrat. And Senate Minority Leader, Stuart Engel, a Republican. Please join us here. In the Well, thank you for joining us tonight. You've just completed a special session, very productive, and in any comparison of the way our state legislature has acted over a good number of years with the present partisan, bitter, deadlocked National Congress, hey, we came out on top by a country mile. So I want to make that point right here. We're not trying to compare you with the deadlock in Washington. When the regular session ended, however, Governor Martinez said that the conclusion represented, and I quote her, a gross failure of leadership. The Las Cruces Sun News editorialized that both parties shared in the blame, in their opinion, and they said that many bills fell victim to what they called the partisanship that dominated the session. That's one point of view. But the question I want to ask each of you to begin with, why couldn't you have gotten your important work done in the regular 60-day session. I'm just going to go down the low. Representative Martinez. Uh, thank you, Sam, and it's an honor uh, to be here, and especially honoring the honorees. I uh, had been speaker and now have moved to the back row, so part of what occurred in this last session uh, was a little bit out of uh, my control. What I could say is, uh, when I was speaker, I tried to get the important stuff done first. So we had done the uh, capital outlay bill and kind of were done with it early, everybody working together. I would suggest that uh, assigning blame isn't important, but learning is. And my uh, opinion has always been nothing succeeds like success. So you start finding out where you agree, and those are your successes that you build upon. If you um, focus on your differences, uh, then you get stuck on those. So we spent probably, I think, too much time on things that we didn't agree upon. Uh, things like uh, the undocumented having driver's licenses, things like abortion. Um, and, and they took up a tremendous amount of time when the things that we do agree upon uh, got a little pushed back. From that. Representative, uh, I'm told that you couldn't hear me earlier. You're blessed. You're lucky. <laughs> I didn't have anything important to say. Here we have the important things. Uh, and let's hear now from uh, the House Majority Leader, Nate Gentry. Uh, thank you, Sam. Yeah, I think I agree with uh, Representative Martinez. I mean, I, I think that the lesson to be learned from uh, this last session was that we need to put in more work earlier. I mean, I know that uh, Chairman Laren Yaga is here, and he did a fantastic job of getting a budget done, uh, getting a budget done quickly. Um, he worked closely with um, Senator John Arthur Smith, and they were successful in getting a budget out, which is our number one job. But during the interim, you know, they have the benefit of LFC meeting frequently and beginning the, the process early. Um, so they have a, you know, a many months head start on that process. So they do a very good job of determining what needs to be done, um, where the others, the other stand, or the other side stand, and coming to an agreement um, through a collaborative effort. So I think the lesson learned um, from last session, particularly on the capital outlay bill, was that um, we need to begin the process earlier, instead of very late in the game, and much before, in my mind, the 60-day session. Senator Papin, so far we've heard, I think, if I've heard it correctly, that you just didn't start early enough with important stuff. Is that your view? Uh, Sam, I, yes, I think that is true. I think so often we get caught up with certain bills and uh, that sort of sucks all the air out of the room. And we get so 
focused on that. The, our main objective done, it's in our Constitution that we must have a balanced budget and we must do that. So I think that it's, it's important and I think that we did pass a lot of bills, I think over a hundred bills that, that we passed unanimously out of both houses. And so I think that also speaks uh, in, in good stead for all of us, that we are able to come together and do that. Senator Engel. Well, it's, uh, in my years there, we've had a similar situations happen before. You know, we can get things done earlier, but the basic, uh, basic way the legislature works is uh, you have things that are very important and they're in one house or another, they're brought forth that way. One house passes them, maybe they're a little bit leery of passing them because maybe the other house will hold something in, in ransom. And you always have to remember too, for the first time in 60 years, since the 1950s, the Republicans had control of the House of Representatives. That's a new, that's a new wave, a new wave there. And uh, the thing about it is, till those things get adjusted, and I think there is some adjustment there this year, but the budget was passed. That's the main thing that we have to pass as legislators. The capital outlay situation changed drastically from July. You had 250, 280 million dollars, perhaps, of capital outlay to fund projects, highway construction, lots of different things like that. By December, we were down to damn near nothing, so to speak. Oil was at $40 a barrel, and it makes a huge difference. So you had a lot of things there that were working in a process on capital outlay and the revenues of the state. So there's always going to be some things that happen like that. There's a tax bill that was brought over. It was on, put on a bill of mine. It was brought back for concurrence. And the Senate didn't hear those bills from the House. It was brought for concurrence, which means you vote up and down. There's no amendments. So very often there's questions on some of those things that are hard to get answered. But basically, there were some disagreements on capital outlay and funding of highway projects things like that. The thing about it was, was after some discussion, both sides of the aisle, and a uh, few press releases that angered this side, angered that side, we got together around the 20th of May, 25th of May, something like that, John Arthur Smith and I, uh, Nate Gentry certainly part of it, the speaker's part of it, and basically tried to make sure that we could get this thing through. The governor's office also participated very well. Everybody gave a little bit. Mm. We get up there and get something done in three hours. And that's what it takes to do the things. There's got to be a, a point of agreement, and uh, that's what happens, and that's how it works. You, you've set the stage. I want to come to the special session, which was very productive, no question about it. But I want to press one more thing about the general session. Uh, so my home county, I was from Doniana County, newspaper, is wrong. You want to tell this audience there wasn't partisanship, that bills didn't die because of gross partisanship, it was Kim Booyah, it was just a question of scheduling and all that? You've come close to saying no, there were disagreements. Of course those things are there. I'd like to hear way. from the others. I carried a right to work bill and it finally got a hearing and it, uh, you know, it went down dead and, uh, you know, I didn't, wasn't anything I didn't expect. The House passed it. We couldn't pass it in the Senate because the votes were we're not there to do it. All right, you raise a you good question. You can call that partisan if you want Let to. Let me ask the others the thing about, about this it is, partisanship. Is I think we want a partisan government in the sense that you we have it. contending views. Absolutely. If we, everyone was agreed, we'd call it, well, I won't use the word national social, but we'd have one party. We don't want one party. But the question was, and we'll come to the special session where you did do a, great, a lot of productive work. During the general session, were you hindered by what this newspaper called excessive partisanship? Say yes or no or, or? Yes, I think it was excessively partisan. Uh, it was uh, surprising to me. Uh, I think we spent more time on political questions than we did on performance questions. Why would that be in your view? Uh, I, I, and I, I don't like to assign blame, but I think there was an exuberance of taking the House for the first time in so many years. Can you blame the Republicans? No, I don't blame them because <laughs> it, you know, it was like, oh, we're, we're in charge now and boom, here it comes. But it was really nothing new. It was a bunch of kind of retreaded stuff that was a little bit partisan. I believe that the general public uh, thinks that the best uh, politics is performance. 
and they want us to pour, perform well and, and get away from the political fights. There's a, uh, if you ask the average man on the street, red, red, straight, red state, blue state, what do you think about those very hot button, button issues? There's very little difference between Massachusetts and, and Utah. But if you ask a likely voter in a primary, there's a huge difference. And sometimes we're looking at the likely voters in the primary instead of focusing on what the general public wants. Mr. Gentry, he, he's, Mr. Martinez has confessed, his, in his view, excessive partisanship. Wrong? No, I disagree. I, I, the, I'm glad that... And he's, that's, that's what you'd expect from a Democrat, Sam. So, <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad that Senator Domenici's name was mentioned by, by both Senators Udall and Heinrich. I mean, there's certainly issues that Republicans and Democrats are going to disagree about. And, you know, that's the nature of politics. That's the nature of partisan government. And certainly there were those issues. Um, you know, there always have been. There are certain bills that, you know, Republicans have run in the past that have been buried because there's been um, Democrat control of both chambers. So obviously those bills were now coming to the floor and making it over to the Senate. And they didn't get very far. And, uh, you know, that was no surprise, I think, to anybody. But I think there was not, um, there did not become a time um, when there weren't those times that we voted on those issues and then we moved on. And that's something that Senator Domenici was great at. You know, to hear him and Senator Kennedy argue against one another on the floor of the Senate, you know, the other was trying to ruin the country and this is the worst thing ever. But then they would find the thing they could agree on and they would work on those issues and make those issues happen. And I think there were those issues this year um, as there always happened. All right. Senator Papin, write a reply about the Democrats versus what uh, Mr. Engel said. Uh, I, I think the Senate, uh, you know, we didn't have a change in party leadership in the Senate. We remain the same as we've been for, for a long, long time. And I think that, uh, I think there were a few issues that did come up that were very partisan. And uh, I think that's the nature of the beast. Uh, but I think in many ways that we were very unified on a lot of things. And I feel very comfortable about that. And I don't think you're going to get away from partisanship uh, when we're talking politics and we're talking passing laws that affect people's lives. I think that's just going to happen. And I think the best way we can do that is if we can come together, if we can sit down and find a common ground, that that's what's important. 